somehow I'm always overestimating what I can do in a certain amount of time and underestimating what has to be done. And this sums perfectly up why the game isn't finished yet. Moin Moin, I'm Yannick and this is Usopp Fraud. My plan was actually to create the game in about one week, but I don't want to upload a game that looks like this. Polishing is what makes a game interesting and except a few examples, unpolished games normally aren't fun to play and the players start losing their interest very fast. The first thing I did was reworking and animating the player's avatar and the zombies. This makes them look more alive and not like sprites that are floating around on the canvas. As I mentioned in the last week's video, I created the zombies in three different versions of strength. I call them lovingly level 1, level 2 and level 3 zombies. Level 1 zombies don't have any special equipment. Level 2 zombies are armed with a shield and survive 2 dashes and level 3 zombies additionally got a bucket as a helmet and survive 3 dashes. When being attacked, they lose a level and you might identify which game I used as the inspiration for the design. Before starting the journey of polishing, I created two more enemy types. The Kobold is smaller and faster than the zombie, but he doesn't run at the player. Easily distracted as they are, Kobolds are aiming for the mouse position. This allows the player to control their movement and to keep them away from their avatar. The last enemy that got implemented is a so-called shooter plant. Once again, I used zombie versus plants as an inspiration. Well, but in my game, the zombies and plants are working together. The shooter plant doesn't move, but is always aiming for the player and shooting deadly bullets at him. After several hours, all the different enemies were acting as expected, so it was time for polishing. As I mentioned in the last video, the background didn't feel like a part of the world. To change this, characters have to interact with the environment. One way to do so is by leaving traces. When zombies are walking around in a sandy arena, they would definitely create some footsteps. So I created a particle effect, which exactly does this. With this particle effect implemented, it's looking like the folks are actually walking on the sand. Another thing that bothered me was the shadow in the sand. The shadow was always behind the characters, so they didn't seem to be in the arena. I fixed that by creating an extra layer for the shadow, which gets drawn on top of everything. Now that the background feels more like a part of the game, it was time to make dashing through the enemies more exciting. I need more particles. Well, and a body that the enemies leave behind when they are dying. And yeah. When beating an enemy, they shall explode in a burst of particles. So I created a particle effect with exactly this functionality. But I didn't stop there. Particles are awesome. So you can imagine that more particles are even better. A nice functionality of Unity's particle system is the option of sub-emitters. I used this to start an other particle effect when the particles of the first effect are colliding with something. With these new effects it's now extremely satisfying to dash through the enemies and it gets even better when there are a lot of enemies in a group. Here you can see the current state of the game with all the enemies and effects enabled. There's still a lot to do like sound effects, music, a recent scoring system, balancing and the menu. but. In my opinion, the game is going in a good direction and will be finished in the next week. So stay tuned to see the end result.